Hello my lovely aunts and guests and welcome to another Live 2D tutorial. Last video we left off importing our model into Live 2D, covering folder structure and layers, and also clipping IDs. So click the card if you missed that video on how to clip your model into different parts and how to import it into Live 2D. This video is going to cover art meshes, how to set up deformers, and what the structure of those deformers is going to look like. So let's get into it. This is just a side note. I only have one eye showing here because there is a way to rig one eye and then copy and flip it. So it saves all the time rigging for the other eye. Um, but that's not in this tutorial. That'll be in a different tutorial. It's just gonna look a little wonky for a little bit. First of all, we wanna make sure everything has a mesh. So you wanna click the corner, select all of your parts, and then you're gonna want to click this button, automatic mesh generator. You want to select all your parts, click auto, set to standard, and then now you're going to have a bunch of these kooky little dots all over your art. And then from there, you can just close out that box. And then you're going to want to go to this button, which is edit texture atlas. It's going to ask me for the first time when I make this to create a new texture atlas. So basically what a texture atlas is, it's kind of like a map of all of your parts. So when you're making it, the name honestly doesn't matter. You can be whatever you want. And the width and the height are generally gonna be 1024. If your model has a lot of parts and they're bigger, you might wanna go up to 2048. But keep in mind that the free version of Live 2D will limit you to, I believe, 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. So if you're using the free version or the uh, <laughs> not, uh, cracked version um <laughs> then you are going to need this this size so 1024 by 1024. um you can make it like really really big but i don't generally recommend it unless your model is for some reason intensely large and complicated but first most things that i've had to do i've never gone bigger than 2048 to be honest default layout just leave it as it is and then click ok and then it's going to open a big window and, and show you all of, your, all of your parts. If you run into something that looks like this, where it's just a big blue rectangle instead of a mesh with triangles, that means that you didn't create a mesh for that part. So if that happens, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna click OK. It's gonna generate a texture atlas for you. And then you're gonna wanna go to the part that was like weird. So click this part and see how when you hover over it, it makes a box instead of these little green lines. So every other part is gonna have these little green lines and that means it has a mesh. But if it just shows up as a box, that means it doesn't have a mesh yet. So click on that, do the same process as before and then exit out. So now it has a mesh on it. So if you make any changes like that, you're gonna wanna go check your texture atlas and make sure that it updated to the proper mesh. And it looks like it did, it's no longer a rectangle, so that looks good. Something else you're going to want to make sure is that all of your parts are here, nothing's missing, and then also make sure that there's no kind of like weird selected art meshes where there shouldn't be anything, because that means you might've had like a speck in your art and you don't want that, right? So zoom in, check all your parts, make sure they all look good. These look fine for the most part. I also want to quickly just go over any changes that I've made to my model parts since the last video, if you notice. So I have separated my chest part from my booba part. That will allow me to have jiggle physics. So if you have booba, then you're going to want to have those be separate things. As well, I separated my the line of my face and the actual face itself. This is going to help with head rotation and making it look a little bit more fluid and smooth. And additionally, I've changed my hair so that it's in multiple layers. I have this back piece of hair, I have kind of a midsection of hair, and then I have my front pieces of hair. I've also separated each eyelash into an individual lash. Generally speaking, the more parts that your body comes in, the more movement and fluidity you can add to your model. I'm gonna click okay. 
And now my texture Alex is going to update with any of the changes that I made. So generally speaking, a standard art mesh is good and well. Like most of the time for most things, it will work just fine. However, with things like your eye or your mouth, those parts of the models tend to move quite a bit. They tend to get deformed quite a bit. And that means you will want more points. So just as an illustration, say I want to make this eye blink, right? And I want to resize it so that you can't see this white part of the eye anymore. If I change it the way that it is right now, uh, it, it works, but it looks a little bit um, jagged, like a little bit more jagged. So for example, if I try selecting these points and then moving them smaller, you'll see that I run into issues with the jaggedness of the edge of this eye white line because the points of the mesh are quite far apart. So you'll notice a difference if I choose the eye white and I click auto again and then I change the preset to deformation heavy, it's going to add a ton more little triangles, okay? And since I have a ton more little triangles, if I go in again and I select this bottom part of the eye and I want to move all these dots at once, I can move it and the edge is much more preserved and much cleaner looking. So generally, the standard deformation works well, but for certain things like the eyes and mouth, it's not going to be as clean as I demonstrated earlier. So select the eye white, the eye line, the upper and lower lip, as well as the mouth like it's behind here, but um, you can select it from the deformer panel on the side here. And then you're gonna wanna go auto preset deformation heavy. There we go. And now they have a bunch of little dots, a bunch of tiny triangles, and that's gonna help make your life a lot easier. Also, I did it earlier, but I can do it again just so that you know how to do this in the future. So for certain things, you're going to want to edit this art mesh and move things around and manipulate these dots. So instead of having to move them one by one like this, which would be an insane amount of work and a lot of time, you can select multiple dots and move them together without affecting the whole thing, right? Because if I drag this whole shape, it's gonna move every single dot. But what if I only wanna move half of these? So I can use the lasso tool or the brush tool. The lasso tool is a selection tool. So you can click and hold and then select and draw a circle around the dots you wanna edit. And now it'll show the dots that you selected in red. And then if you go back to this arrow tool, you're able to move around just the dots that are red and the other dots will stay the same size. Um, you can also do this with the brush selection tool. Um, so essentially this is like the same thing except you use a brush instead. So you can click and drag and kind of paint this red area. And then once you let go, you can select those dots. So if you paint, let go, and then go back to the arrow tool. Now those dots that you painted over are selected and you can do the same thing, right? So those are the two different ways of manipulating the art mesh. As well, I want to show you how to edit the mesh itself. So if you want to edit the mesh without editing the, uh, the actual picture, right? You're gonna want to click on the part that you wanna edit. Let's do the eyebrow, for example. So uh, if I edit this, it's going to move the picture behind it. If I wanna edit the mesh itself, I click on the part, and then I go to this tool, which is the edit mesh manually tool. Now it puts you in isolation mode where you can edit these dots without moving the picture behind it. So say I want to make it so that this eyebrow has one line in the middle and then just other dots connecting to it instead of like whatever shape it is right now. So you can just click the dots that you don't want, click the delete key and just take them out. Ba, ba. That. Right, and then you can draw dots by clicking on a dot so that that's the dot you start from and then just clicking along points to create new dots. 
you'll notice that there's these kind of um, light blue cyan colored lines between the dots. These don't exist yet, but these are structural lines that will help make this mesh make sense basically. And they're just suggestions from the program. So you don't have to follow them. Like I could make a new dot and that would create different suggestions. But if you want to create all of these lines without having to manually click them yourself, there's this feature up on top here called auto connect, which will allow you to just automatically follow the suggestions that the program gives you. So that's how you custom edit your art mesh. I know some tutorials will ask you to do this and to do it in a specific way. I don't want to make things more complicated, so I generally don't change this, but sometimes certain parts will require a little bit of tweaking and editing as with all things in live 2d. So I'm going to hit okay. And then that's going to confirm it and make it like this. Once you've made edits like this, you should always go back to check your texture atlas and make sure that it all still looks good. Also, another thing about texture atlases is, is you're going to want to make sure that things are not overlapping. So if they are overlapping, it's going to make your model look weird. For example, if I move this hair and I move it on top of this skirt part, right? And I click OK. It's going to generate a texture atlas. And then now my hair is going to show up on top of my skirt in the final. And then my skirt is going to show up behind my hair as well. So that's why things cannot touch. Otherwise, it creates a really weird looking model, which is probably not what you intended when you designed it. So in your texture atlas, you want to make sure that things are not touching no touch. You can also click automatic layout and it can automatically generate a layout for you that um, prevents this from happening. And yeah, that's the basics of texture analysis. So now that we have all of that out of the way, we can start setting up our deformers. 